Scottish author Robert Burns was famous for both his songwriting and his poetry. He had a keen ear for the speech of his native land, and in his work he employed its characteristic sound to impart a fresh vitality to the English literature. Robert Burns was the son of a tenant farmer or sharecropper. He spent his childhood moving with his family from one farm to another. At each stop, his father tried to eke out a living on the land largely unsuited to agriculture. Whatever education Burns obtained came mainly from reading. His favorite writers were Shakespeare and Pope. He also became familiar with the early Scottish poets through hearing orally transmitted folk songs. These songs inspired him to write poetry of his own. After the death of his father, Burns quickly developed his gift for expressing emotions of love, friendship, and amusement in verse. He also attempted to keep the family farm going, but failed. Discouraged by his failure, he considered leaving Scotland. His fortunes soon changed for the better, however. At the age of 27, he published poems, chiefly in the Scottish dialect, a work that enjoyed immediate success with simple farmers and sophisticated critics alike. Burns then gave up farming and moved to Edinburgh, where he played the role expected of him, that of a gifted but uncultured rustic. Fellow Scot and poet Henry Mackenzie called him this heaven-taught plowman. Burns eventually grew tired of being patronized by the fashionable literary set. In 1788, he left Edinburgh and settled on a farm in Ellisland, Dumfrieshire. However, he found farming at Ellisland difficult, despite the help of his new wife, Jean Amour. When his friend, James Johnson, planned to assemble a definitive anthology of Scottish folk songs, he asked Burns to help him, and Burns jumped at the chance. He threw himself wholeheartedly into the project, and for the next three years, roamed the countryside, collecting, editing, and writing lyrics for many old Scottish tunes thus preserving the rhythms and accents of his native tongue. Considering this work to be a labor of love, he declined payment and refused to allow his name to appear in the collection. In doing so, he created difficulties for scholars who have found it almost impossible to determine where some of the original folk songs leave off and Burns's original contributions begin. During the last eight years of his life, Burns returned briefly to farming, held a government job, and continued to write poetry, only a few of which equaled the quality of his earlier lyrics. Bankrupt and hounded by creditors, he died at age 37 of a chronic heart condition.